Hey friends, we are back with another great episode and incredible guest. I met Carrie, my gosh, it was, I, I think she jammed me on Facebook, something like that. Like the, yes. the power of social media sometimes is amazing. How, mm -hmm. I don't know how she heard of me, but she heard of me. She reached out to me and I was on her show. Now she's on my show because we really connected. I think when you are able to connect with like-minded people, those connections are deep from the get-go. And Carrie yes. and I connected on multiple things, really. I mean, entrepreneurship, faith was a big thing. We talked all about a lot of different things, but our journeys most most significantly, and we have both lost people to cancer and experienced significant grief. And Carrie is joining me today because she is a forgiveness coach. She's also a life transformation coach for women over 50, and she's a grief coach. But today we're going to focus on forgiveness. And I think that this is one that you guys will really find valuable because the reality is no matter where we are in our life, we have experiences, we have relationships. It could be clients, it could be partners, it could be children, it could be friends, but there's always a need for forgiveness. And as women, we tend to hold on to things. You know, my boys, when they were little, they would just duke it out and then it was done. You know, they were mad at each other for a minute. And then right after that, they were buddies and they were playing and doing something crazy again. And girls are different. Women are different. We tend to hold on to that. I don't know, frustration, anger, whatever it is, and or grief even. And so to be able to forgive, I think allows us to move forward and really become the people we're meant to be. So Carrie's going to help us dive into that. So I'm going to stop rambling and welcome Carrie to the show. <laughs> Carrie Vrocchio, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thank you, Robin. I am so excited about this. This is a topic that is so close to my heart. It's life-changing when you learn how to forgive. It really and truly is. And I have to tell you, when I was interviewing on your show, we talked a little bit about my book. And by the time this airs, my book will have been published and everything else. And the listeners know from a previous episode, when I interviewed Ellen Feldman, I had a little emotional conflict with my mother about publishing my book because my book is my journey. And there were some dysfunction in our family growing up. And we grew up in an incredible home, incredible family, you know, tons and tons of love, tons of faith. And for the most part, it was really, really good. But this writing the book was really an exercise in vulnerability and forgiveness yes. in moving forward. And I feel like I came through that process as a different human, as a different yes. person with different, you know, my values are strengthened. My faith is, faith is strengthened and my relationships are strengthened. So I I'm super happy that we're talking about this today because I think it really will help people transform wherever they are on their journey today. Yeah. So I want you to tell the listeners, if you would, please just a little bit about you and your journey to get to where you are today. And then we'll dive into forgiveness. Okay. I am now a transformation coach, life coach, forgiveness coach. I speak to women and a lot of corporate women leaders in corporate who are struggling with their life success. And I, love this journey that God has me on. I'm open to wherever he leads me. And going back to 2010, my brother, my oldest brother was diagnosed with a terminal cancer and in 2007. And then in 2010, we lost him. He fought hard. He taught me how to live while he was dying. And a week before he died, we were sitting in a restaurant my husband and I were sitting across from him. He was weak. He was a shell of himself. He was, he was a, a big man at six foot five and he was just skin and bones. And he reached across the table and he took my hand and he said, I see the doctor Wednesday, but we both know this cancer has taken over my entire body. We both know this. We don't have to hear a doctor say it. And he said, before I die, I need you to promise me that you will get out of your prison, get out from behind that corporate desk and start using the gifts God gave you. Promise me you'll spend the rest of your life helping others choose more life while they still have life to choose. And I mm. promised him, I promised him I would do it. I had no idea how I was going to do it. I was terrified to do it. Right. I mean, I was, I was safe in my cage. <laughs> I was very safe in my cage and I knew he was right. And I knew that there was so much more I was supposed to be doing with my life. And I was saying, no, I was afraid to let go of the rope. 
And a couple of months after he died, I had a dream. And in the stream, I walked into a restaurant. Billy was there. I knew it was him. I kept trying to get his attention. He was ignoring me. And I finally went and I stood in front of him and I said, Billy Berger, why won't you talk to me? Why won't you pay attention to me? I miss you. And he looked up at me in the stream. He looked up at me and he said, because I died. Don't you remember? I died. I'm only here to give you a message. Life is short, little sister. Choose wisely. Oh my gosh. It's still, I just have to take a beat. <laughs> it still gets me when I think about that dream. And I, I woke up, I mean, immediately I sat straight up in bed gasping. It woke my husband up. I gasped so loud. And I just decided I will be a vessel. I don't know how, bring me what I need. I don't know what to do. And I started to enroll in courses on how to be a more effective speaker, my coach certifications, how to be a writer. How do you leave your corporate job? <laughs> 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 and it all, once I just laid it all and said, leave me, God, I don't know what to do. And that's how it all started. And I, I ended up going into my boss and saying, I'm done. I'm done. I, I am following this path. And he actually looked at me and said, you'll never make it without me. And I just said, don't believe me, just watch. Yes, I will, because this is the calling on my life. And that's how I started getting into this. And on that path, forgiveness was something that I realized that I was struggling with. And if I was struggling with it, probably a lot of other women were too. And mm -hmm. as I talked to more and more women, yes, they were. Yes, they were. That is so interesting. Like, I, I don't know if you're like me in this regards, but if he had said that to me, you won't make it on your own. I would have been like, watch me. Yep. And that would have just powered me even. Oh, more. big time, <laughs> big time. I was like, oh, oh, yes, I will. Yeah. So what were you doing before in your cage? What were you doing? I was corporate upper level management. I was the general manager for three companies that this gentleman owned. And I, I ran all three of them from staffing and taking control of the staff and doing the books and the banking and meeting with anybody who came in, all of the franchise corporate upper, upper level echelon that came in. Those were all up to me. Everything. I ran those businesses. Wow. It was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. So you had really been in the trenches, so to speak of yes. the day-to-day -day grind where yes. you don't really get a sense of relief. You don't have that creative liberty and opportunity. And you are yeah. so fun. You guys, if you aren't following her on Instagram, she's so <laughs> funny. She does all these videos about things people say to women over 50 and it, they're hilarious. So, I mean, from doctor's appointments to whatever, it's just so funny, but okay. So Carrie, I'm guessing that you had to use forgiveness with that. Boss. Yes, I did. And not just the boss, but the people within the business, there were some people that he brought in without even like, I would say they're not a good fit for this company, but he would bring them in anyway. And one of these people in particular, I literally nicknamed him Satan in skin. He was Ooh. horrible. He was horrible. And the things he said to me were just, you know, you're not worth the paper. Your paycheck is printed on. We had to go up steps to my office and sometimes I would be walking up the steps and he would go, wow, Veracchio, your butt's getting awfully big. I don't know how you can even walk around with that thing. I mean, the, the comments were horrible and oh my goodness, I wanted him gone and the owner of the company fought against me and it got to the point where I just remember standing up at my desk one day and telling this guy to get out of my office. And he said, wow, I, I sent some animosity. And I said, oh, there's a lot of animosity. Get out of my office and don't ever come in. I, I even said so many times to my husband, I'll never forgive him for the things he has said to me. I literally let it eat me up inside. Mm -hmm. And it was an unfortunate event. I mean, the owner of this company <laughs> is my brother-in-law. So we're now we're crossing family lines as well. It was a very hard and difficult situation. And I realized even after I left that I was harboring all this unforgiveness towards the owner of the company and towards this, this person who was just brutal to me. I mean, I won't even, I won't even say out loud some of the things he said, because they are so, so offensive and so awful. And I needed to work 
on my journey to forgiving him, which also then led to my memories of being sexually abused in the past and forgiving those two men, it all kind of came together. And I realized there was no way I could help other women on their journeys to greater success in their life and business. If I was going to hold on to all of this bitterness Uh and unforgiveness, it wasn't going to happen. It's like a brick in your life. And you, it's like someone has put the brick on your legs and tossed you in to drown and you're going to drown. If you don't get the bricks off, you're going to drown. Yeah. And, and I like how you also referenced, it was eating you up from the inside out. You know, I have a long history with anxiety and and this is one of my symptoms, but it was always from my gut. You know, that's where everything manifested was in my gut. And I think that when you are sitting in a place of, of anger or bitterness, unforgiveness, I think those emotions tend to harbor themselves physically. Like they really, it's, you know, our brain and our bodies are so connected. They're so interwoven. God Mm -hmm. just created such intricate beings, but it's really important to pay attention to that. So yes, I think that, you know, the fact that you recognized, oh my gosh, this is what, this is what this is doing to me. I have to make a change. And of course, I'm sure that through prayer and everything that influenced you to be able to make that decision as well. So what steps did you take to be able to forgive these people in your life? so that you could move forward? Yeah, that's a really, really great question. And I love how you brought that in. It does literally eat you from the inside out. And there were so many physical symptoms. There was the inability to really process food. There was like inflammation and weight gain and inability to sleep, inability to focus. There were so many physical symptoms of holding on to this. And so as I started to study forgiveness and I really delved into it, I realized that I was thinking, okay, if I forgive these people in my life that have hurt me, then number one, I'm giving them a ticket out of what they did. I'm just giving them a free pass. And then I can potentially get hurt by them again, because reconciliation and forgiveness were the same thing to me and they're not. And so the first thing I did was educate myself on what forgiveness is and forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. And we hear that. And maybe everybody listening has heard that before, but I want you to really grasp it. Forgiveness is a gift we give ourselves. And it doesn't mean we have to reconcile the person. And it doesn't mean they get a free pass. They still have consequences. We don't have to accept consequences on ourselves. And we don't have to, we don't even have to allow them to be a part of our lives ever again, ever. And when I realized that, then it was easier than to delve into more forgiveness and look at the Hawaiian forgiveness prayer, which is thanking them, thanking them for the hurt they brought into your life because of the lessons I learned and Mm -hmm. asking them for forgiveness because I harbored it for so long, you know, saying, I'm sorry. And please forgive me for allowing you to have so much power over me for how long with the sexual abuse in my past, it was literally decades. And then actually saying to that person, I love you. I love you because you taught me more about me and you helped me grow as a person. It's hard and it didn't happen overnight. Did you actually physically speak to them and apologize and forgive them in person? The, the sexual abuses in my past, I did not because I didn't even know how to find them. To this person, yes. The person I was working with, yes. And he laughed at me, of course. It was just a big joke but it didn't matter. His response didn't matter. And I still follow this forgiveness exercise and prayer to this day when I feel hurt and I make myself be aware of those I have hurt Mm -hmm. because there are people we hurt and sometimes we don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. And being willing to ask for forgiveness is also a huge part of this journey. And Case in point yesterday, this is going to sound silly, but it's, it's really not. I was saying something to my husband about, I had been away for a week because I got stranded with all the bad weather and everything. So a three-day trip turned into seven 
And when I got home, I was teasing my husband because it looked like nothing in the refrigerator had been moved around, no vegetables, no fruit, you know? And I was like, do you even eat fruits and vegetables when I'm away? And I meant it kind of as a joke. And he turned around and he said, you know, I know you care about me, but all I hear is nag, 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 nag. And it stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. That was not my intention. And I took a step back and was able to focus on the things I was saying and how that was coming across to him. Mm -hmm. Because in my heart was saying, I've lost so many people. And 2021, I I mean, I, I held my mom as she died 19 days after a cancer diagnosis. And where I'm coming from is almost a place of fear. I don't want to lose anybody else. Please eat your fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And what he was hearing was, I don't please you. And it, it really brought me to a place of asking for forgiveness because I didn't mean to hurt him, but I was hurting him. Yeah. That's a huge part of forgiveness. When we can recognize that in ourselves, it makes it easier to offer forgiveness for those who have hurt us. Mm Mm-hmm. Because well, don't, we don't know where they're coming from. Yeah. Right, right. And don't you think that I have so many thoughts going through my head, but yeah. don't you think too, if we don't seek forgiveness for the things that we've done, then we're harboring that as well. And that yes. shows up as guilt, which is a, a negative emotion that is yes. going to do, have the same impact on yes. us as that bitterness towards someone else. We yes. become bitter towards ourselves. And yes. I think- it all goes hand in hand. So the first step is to recognize that yes. something is happening. These emotions are there. It's bitterness yes. because I am holding a grudge against someone else and, or yourself and be able to forgive just recognizing that is the first step. Yes. But, you know, I think something you said was, was also important to recognize is that things don't happen to us. They happen for us. And yes. when you look at an experience with someone else and you can look at that person and say, you know what? Thank you. Because I'm a better person today than I yes. was before you did that to me. Yes. And I think we don't look at life that way often enough. I yeah. I'm guilty of this. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. well, why did that happen to me? Well, would I want that to happen to anyone else? First of all, no. And second of all, well, if not me, then who? And then third, it's like, well, it happened because now I'm a better person. Like I've gone through every experience of my life to become the person I am today, which means I'm now able to help so many more people because of each one of those experiences. Yes, it is so true. And it is such a beautiful process and it's such a freeing process. And that's what I want everyone to really, really understand is that this gift of forgiveness that you're giving yourself transforms you like nothing else does. And I realized harboring unforgiveness was even keeping me from being able to work through grief of losing my brother. And then four years later, you know, holding my dad while he died. And I realized that all of that grief was bottled up again in my gut. And I was unable to really feel all those feelings because I was just harboring unforgiveness. And it's a block. It Mm -hmm. is a complete block to everything, including truly grieving. And the grieving process is, it's really quite beautiful. But if we're harboring that unforgiveness, we're blocking ourselves from that beauty and that release as well. It doesn't matter if that unforgiveness is for someone else, not the person you're grieving. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because it's just like a wall you've built up. And I'll give you a really extreme example. My mom had a very, I mean, I always thought she had a, an idyllic childhood and I would always ask her about her parents. My grandmother died when I was not quite a year old and I don't remember her at all. I just remember my mom talking about her and how close they were. And she would tell me stories about her. She was German and she had all these weird German things that she would say. And, and I remember one time as a child saying to my mom, well, what about your dad? And all I got was he died and he's buried with his parents and we don't talk about him. That's all I ever got. And so I learned to stop asking about him, but I, I never knew what happened. And, and I would almost sometimes have these these fantasies where my grandfather showed up and he loved us all. Cause I didn't have a grandfather. My dad's dad died when my dad was 13. So I never had a grandfather experience and I would see my friends with their grandfathers. And I thought, wow, it'd be so cool to have a grandfather. 
And my mom moved in with us when she was 82 years old, a few years back. And (laughs) about six months after she moved in, my brother called me, my other brother called me and he said, you sitting down? I said, I can be. He said, yeah, you might want to. He had started delving into our family history. And he said, I found an article about our grandfather. I said, oh, cool. He said, well, sit down. (laughs) My grandfather was a womanizer. And I did know eventually my mom had let out that he did beat her mom and her three older brothers. And I said, well, I knew he, he was not really that nice of a person. And he said, well, this one woman decided that she wasn't waiting for him any longer. She knew he wasn't going to leave our grandmother. And so she broke off the relationship. And that evening, our grandfather went into a bar with a shotgun and he shot her. And then he turned the gun on himself and killed himself. My mother was three years old. Oh my word. I was in my fifties when I found this out and my mother held on to this all those years and never forgave him. We always knew she didn't like her dad. And we always knew we weren't supposed to ask about him. Then when we found that out, she just said, well, I knew y'all would find out someday, but then she was free to talk about it. And the bitterness was deep. It had formed fingers in every area of her life. I just realized then why she just, when my brother died, her oldest son, and when my dad died, they were married almost 60 years. And it's not that she didn't cry, but there was never a deep grieving process that went on. And I remember talking to her about forgiveness and she would say, I'll never forgive him for what he did. I grew up as the girl whose dad was a murderer and then killed himself. That's what I heard. Kids would point at me and say this. And she was, you know, very clear to my dad that he, that us kids would never know because she didn't want us thinking that was a good way to handle a situation, which didn't make sense to me at all. But in a young mother's mind, holding a new baby, she couldn't bear the thought that any of us would think that this was the way to handle a situation. Mm -hmm. And so we were not allowed to know. And before she died, about nine months before she died, We were talking and she chose to forgive her father. And that is when she was able to fully grieve the loss of my brother and the loss of my dad and to live life with a joy that she had never known since she was three years old. That is what holding on to all of that does to you. There was always a wall up Mm -hmm. between my mom and her children, always, until she chose to forgive my grandfather, the wall came down. That's amazing. And how sad mm-hmm. that she, she lived that way, but I can see how yes. people, I can see how people do that. And you think yeah. of, you think of people who are, have navigated certain situations and it's no different than putting yourself in the position of victim mode versus choosing to yes. accept that things happen for you, you know, and for a yes. reason, and you're yeah. right where you're meant to be, but that if you stay in that place, it's so heavy. It's so dark. It's so heavy. And think about it, Robin, back in the day. And when my mom was a young woman, nobody was talking about this and there weren't women helping other women. It just, it didn't take place. Yeah. Yeah. And who knows, you know, what other circumstances could have been involved in all of that. But, and, and I think things happen like that today, we see it on the news and it's, it's so incredibly heartbreaking. And there's so much more with, you know, mental health and all these things that people don't understand and don't take action on. And so things just build and build and build, and then people snap and it's really sad. So what you're saying basically is we need to, to accept the things that happen and actually forgive and look to the future. Because if we don't yes. forgive, we're going to stay in this place of heaviness and darkness, yes. and we're not going to be able to enjoy the life that God has put forward for us. Exactly. So what do you say to people, Carrie, who are struggling with this? So first, I mean, you've kind of given us tips on how to recognize this. Like there's something, yeah. there's bitterness, there's anger, there's physical symptoms. Your body is not healing properly. You're not digesting properly, whatever the case may be, you're not able to sleep. There's a root cause for that. And if you have anger, if you have bitterness, if you have been assaulted or hurt, look towards what that is, who that is, and then try to forgive once you forgive, or, or once you recognize this, that you do need to forgive, what steps do you take to be able to forgive? Yeah, it is a process. And when I'm talking with someone, whether it's in a group or in a 
in a one-on-one -on -one setting, I will always remind them that this is a process and it can some, sometimes be one step forward and two steps back. And then it can be two steps forward and one step back. It is a process where you feel like you have really forgiven that person and then something will happen and it triggers you. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, we start the process again. I am a journaler. I am huge on journaling. It is cathartic. And people who tell me they hate journaling, I will always say, okay, for this, I'm going to ask you that you grab the journal out again, please, uh -huh. yes. because it is, it is so big because I want you to actually write the person's name and then write. And I forgive you. Thank you for what, what you brought into my life to help me be a stronger person. Forgive me for holding on to all of this for so long. And let me offer you love as you journey forward. Writing it out is important and it's hard. And some people get to the first line and, and they have to stop because that hurt is so deep. And I encourage them to just keep going. This is a long process. It doesn't happen overnight, especially if you've been holding on to it for a long time. I remember writing this out to my sexual abusers and just sobbing because I'd held on to it for so long. And I was so angry, so angry. One of them, I was three years old when it started. How could you do this to a child? And I still can't say I understand. I don't, I will never understand that, but I can circle around and look at his life and know that I don't know everything that happened in his life and what brought him to that. Mm -hmm. But I can almost offer some compassion at what, what was in your life that brought you to stoop to this level. Mm -hmm. And then it's easier to offer that forgiveness. He's not hurting me anymore. And that's a huge, huge thing is knowing right. you're in a safe place. They're not hurting you right now. Yeah. And I think that's important to recognize Carrie, because when we look at others with compassion, we can start to understand that yes. they're, they're sick or yes. they're doing what was taught to them, what has yes. been done for them. And when something is done to you as a child, I think it's really hard to sometimes decipher right versus wrong to discern yes. that even though that made me feel awful, I, I have this gravitation toward it. And yes. I think that's so much of, I think mental health is so the root of so much of that, because when your yes. soul is damaged at such a young age, how do you navigate that going forward? Yes. Yeah. That's probably a whole nother episode, but <laughs> I I'm so grateful that you were here to talk to us today about forgiveness. I think it's something that's very powerful and, you know, I have to bring back, you know, Jesus died for us to yes. give us that forgiveness. And he's yeah. called us to forgive others as he's yes. forgiven us. Yes. And if we look at how much grace he gives us, how little, how little grace does it take for us to forgive someone else compared right. to what he's done for us? Exactly. You know? Yes. Yeah. So yes. I think that's empowering concept. Carrie, yes. I could talk to you all day, you know, your, your <laughs> radical empowerment method and all of these things, but I think forgiveness is a part of that method. So it is. if the listeners want, they can tap into more information from you through your book, radical yes. empowerment method. And you talk about forgiveness in the book, you go through yes. life transformation, the grieving process and how to overcome grief and all of those things. But a lot of it starts with forgiveness. And I'm so grateful yes. that, that we talked about this today. First of all, do you have yes. a favorite quote that you would like to leave the listeners with? Yes, I actually have it on my desk and it's by Albert Einstein. And it says in the middle of difficulties lies opportunity. I love that one. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely. I, love it. He I was literally a brilliant have a man. <laughs> yes, he was. He was. And how many difficulties did he face? Right. But that's where our opportunities lie. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes. 100%. Yeah. And how can the listeners learn more from you connect with you? Yeah. Uh, follow me on Instagram. It's I am at I am Carrie V E E V E E on that one. I am Carrie V and my website is coach com. and everything is on there from my blog to the podcast, to my books, everything is there. Yes. And I will yeah. put all of those links in the show notes. Carrie, thank you so much for being here. It was an honor to have you. Thank you, Robin.